<laughs> Johnson's Wax Program with Fiddle McGee and Molly. Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Bill Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. You know, there's only one genuine Johnson's Glow Coat. No other self-polishing floor wax can make your kitchen linoleum shine and glisten in exactly the same way. And I'm sure that's why more women use Glow Coat than any other self-polishing floor wax. But now there's a special reason for changing to Johnson's Glow Coat. Glow Coat has a new glow, a glow that makes your linoleum shine with greater luster and beauty, far more brightly than before. And getting that glistening finish is so easy. You just apply Glow Coat to your linoleum, let it dry and watch it produce its own sparkling luster. Johnson's Glow Coat needs no help from you. There's no buffing or polishing necessary. Try the Glow Coat with the new glow, the one made exclusively by S.C. Johnson & Son. You can tell genuine Johnson's Glow Coat by the familiar yellow container with the bright red band. Ask for Glow Coat tomorrow and make your kitchen a brighter place to work. It's amazing what strange things can happen with ordinary objects. Look what Alice did with a looking glass. Remember what fun Aladdin had with a lamp. See what a beanstalk did for Jack. And look who's coming up the front steps of 79 Wistful Vista with a common-looking shoebox. Yes, it's himself, a Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly. I'm back from downtown. I got home with my shoes. Okay. Good for you. Did you get home with your trousers, too? Because it's pretty nippy to be... Oh, you mean the shoes you had half sold? Yep, the instant service shoe repair. I left them yesterday and got them today. Uh-huh. Yep, there they are. Might as well open them up and put them on. They're always a little... Oh, that's funny. I could have swore that shoemaker gave me my shoes in a brown box. Looks more like a dirty white to me. Yeah. Maybe it faded. Oh, well, don't matter. Don't... Hey, these aren't my shoes at all. Well, this is just an old box full of folding money and... Money! What? Hey, holy cake smoke, Molly. Look at the greenbacks. A box full. Seventy days, McGee. Paper money. Oh, dear. Oh, stacks of it. Tens and twenties. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Money, money, money. Why, we're rich, Molly. Oh, McGee, we're no such a thing. And put the lid back on it quick. Huh? My goodness, I never seen so much temptation in one pile in my life. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Millions, thousands, anyhow. Huh? Oh, why, the shoe man gave it to me and... No, come to think of it, I watched him put my shoes in a box and hand it to me. All right, and then what? Well, I took a streetcar home, changed seats a couple times. Hey, that's what must have happened. I must have got boxer switched with somebody on the streetcar some way. And to think of all the nasty things I've said about that lovely streetcar company. <laughs> Well, you can apologize to them tomorrow, dearie. Right now, we'd better... Yeah, we'd better count it. You said it. <laughs> Watch out now. I'll dump it out and... Oh, look at those beautiful stacks of Jack. All labeled nice and neat. McGee, and... please, put it back in the box. It... Huh? Oh, that's a lot of money, isn't it? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I waited a long time for this, Molly. This is a real American success story, kiddo. You know that? Success story? Why, certainly. A poor boy works hard all his life, always honest and fair to his fellow man, gives everybody an even break, picks up the wrong box on a streetcar, and winds up rich. Well, that's America. <laughs> Opportunity for all. Where else could a thing like that happen? Let me see. Five hundred? A thousand? Fifteen hundred? No, Hmm? no, McGee, no. Now, stop talking like that. Somebody lost that money. I'll say they did, and I found it. (laughs) So get the steamship companies on the phone, baby. Time's a-wasting. Oh, boy. Honolulu. Waikiki Beach. (laughs) Lying on the sand at Oahu. That's pronounced Wahoo, dearie. You said it. Wahoo! (laughs) Five (laughs) thousand. Sir, we'll both go to (laughs) Oahu. I better count it again. Carefuler. 
10, 20, 30, 40. This is probably the man right now. Hold it, hold it now. Don't let him in. Wait till I put this dough away in the desk. Don't tell anybody about it. There. Come in. Oh, for goodness sakes, it's Dr. Gamble. Come in, doctor. Mm, Thank you, Molly. And good day to you, (laughs) Eggface. Oh, it's you. Hi, Hemstitcher. You can't stay, can you? Huh? You're just passing through, I hope. McGee, what kind of greeting is that for the good doctor? Well, he may. Ignore him, my dear. I always do. Besides, I believe you can always find some good in everybody. Even little gutter nose here. <laughs> Certainly. In fact, the more I talk to people about you, my boy, the more I realize you have one thing about you that everybody loves. Yeah? What, doctor? Your wife. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Say, sit down and visit a while. Nice to talk to you. Oh, don't encourage him, Molly. Leave him go. I got no time to be gabbing about odds and ends with a guy with one of the oddest ends that ever busted a spring in our... (laughs) I got important things to do. Your idea of something important to do, Knuckle Nose, is to go sit in the corner and count your toes. Or can you count that high yet? Now, Doctor, don't tease him. He's just got things on his mind this morning, that's all. He's really a pretty nice lad. If he is, he manages to conceal it very well. I took out an appendix last week that had more charm and personality than he has. <laughs> oh, yeah? You took out my appendix, too, three years ago. But I still get sore throats, fat so. <laughs> well, gee, that's not from your appendix. Huh? It's only since you had your tonsils out that you keep catching colds. Well, he took them out, too. Calls himself a doctor, and you can't even tell people how to keep from catching colds. I can tell you how to keep from catching cold, mush mouth. Huh? Do as I say, and you'll never have another one. Yeah, what do I do? Stop breathing. <laughs> Look, I'd like to stay and chat a while, Molly, but I must be going. I'm taking Miss Fifi Tremaine out tonight. Oh, and... good for you, Doctor. You know, I'd begun to think Mayor Latrivia was practically engaged to her the way he talks. That's what he thinks, too. <laughs> You just ask Fifi whose fraternity pin she's wearing these days. Fraternity pin? No kidding. Yours, Doc? Well, next time you see her, just ask her. I will, Doctor. Now let me know, will you? <laughs> she's got such a collection of them, I've forgotten which one is mine. Go on, Jim. <laughs> At last. Let me at that door. Boy, oh boy, is this living. Call the steamship companies, Molly. Get a travel agency. Now, look, McGee. Whoever lost this money will undoubtedly run an ad in the paper. I got that covered. Don't let a newspaper in here. We don't read the ad. We're not responsible. If the paper boy throws the evening paper on the porch, I'll throw it back at him. I'll knock him off that bicycle so fast he'll let me see. 10, 20, 30, 40... Billy Mills in the orchestra, and so in love.
960, 970, 980, 990. 5,000. Hot dog. Five grand. Better count it once more to be sure. 10, 20, 30. Oh, look, 40. Mickey, you gotta get rid of that money. You've got to find the owner. Why don't you put an ad in the Gazette? Oh, fine. Great idea. Will the person or persons who lost $5,000 in 10s and 20s on the 14th Street streetcar please contact Simple Minded Fibber McGee? <laughs> 79 Wistful Vista. My gosh, Tootsie, with an ad like that, we'd make the 1849 gold rush look like a turtle race. You don't have to advertise like that, silly, but you can't keep money that isn't yours. Well, they got my shoes, haven't they? Oh. <laughs> Is it my fault if they got the worst of the trade? Look, it, it was cold this morning. Yes? Suppose some barefoot guy seen them shoes. He says to himself, well, he says, there's a nice pair of shoes. I'll just take them shoes and leave this $5,000. <laughs> so he swaps boxes. I get five grand and he keeps his feet from freezing. You want I should welch on a deal like that? Well, you'll have to wrestle with your own conscience, if any. I'm sure you'll find some way to get this money back to its owner. In the meantime, I've got to go get some potatoes in the oven for dinner. Okay, Tootsie. Ah, oh, there goes a good kid. <laughs> Too good, almost. Here she has a chance to get a mink coat, a trip to Sun Valley, and a diamond Tarara, and what does she do? Tries to get five grand back to some dimwit that hasn't... Uh oh got to cover this dough. There. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, Teeny. <laughs> Come on in. I'm glad to see you, sis. I got a question I'd like to ask you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Look, you're a nice, clean, upstanding little girl. I'll say I am. Mm -hmm. I'm nice and clean on account my mama made me take a bath, I bet you. Oh. And I'm upstanding because she had to persuade me with a hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, can my mama persuade. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean, sis. I was 18 years old myself before I knew you could use a hairbrush for brushing hair, too. <laughs> but look, about my question, just suppose you accidentally, accidentally now, found $5,000 on a streetcar, see? $5,000? Just supposing, of course. What would you do with it? Keep it? Oh, no, mister, no. Never. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? No. I'd give it to my daddy, I bet you. Yeah, well, what would he do with it? Keep it or take it back? That, mister, is a very interesting question. Yeah? I've seen him get 30 cents too much change at the cigar store and forget to mention it. Mm -hmm. But, on the other hand, I've seen him get short change two cents and yell his head off. <laughs> I guess that's human nature, I guess. Yeah. Well, you're not much help, sis, but thanks for trying anyway. Is that the $5,000 over there, mister? Huh? All that green stuff under the newspaper there? Well, oh, 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 now look, sis. Don't, don't go blabbing about this all over town. My gosh, you'll start a stampede in here that... Uh, do me a favor. Forget it, will you? Oh, sure. I'm a good forgetter, I bet you. Especially when I'm drinking chocolate sodas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I could drink three chocolate sodas and forget my own name, uh, I bet you. Uh, here. Here's a buck. Forget my name, too, will you? Okay. So long, mister. Well, I guess I better count it again. Let's see now. Ten, twenty, oh, thirty... Oh, McGee, for goodness sake, stop counting that money. It's $5,000 and it isn't going to change. Okay, but I wish you'd realize what we could do with this dough. My gosh, kiddo, you always said if we could afford it, you'd like to travel. I would, but I don't want to be looking over my shoulder all the time when I might be seeing the Grand Canyon or something. Besides... Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. What's the good... Hey, is that money? It ain't chopped chives, Junior. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox, may we ask you a hypothetical question? Certainly. Okay, look. Suppose you were coming home on a streetcar and found 5,000 bucks in an old shoebox. What would you do? Burn the box, hide the dough, and keep my trap shut. I don't believe it. Well, no, I guess I wouldn't at that. I suppose you'd make every effort to find the owner and return the money to him. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I would. I'm a fool, but I'm an honest fool. Well, himself here seems to be proceeding on the finder's keeper's loser's weeper's theory. And why not? Who can be trusted with $5,000 better than a dope that leaves it laying on a street in a, in a, in a streetcar on the seat? <laughs> <laughs> Who can be 
trusted better than that. <laughs> I can't. That people can be trusted better than that. I can do a lot of people a lot of good with this money. Like whom, for instance? Travel agents, deck stewards, jewelry salesmen, mink raisers. <laughs> Gosh, they got to live too, you know. They're people same as us. Now, look, pal, let me tell you something. Yeah? You know I'm no goody-goody. I don't preach to people. But after all, you've got to live with yourself, pal. You've got to be honest with yourself. I do? Suppose somebody, suppose somebody walked up to me and said, Hollow, what's absolutely the only answer to scuffed-up, worn-looking linoleum? Heavenly days, how'd we ever get way over there? <laughs> suppose they ask me, what is it that brightens up the colors of that linoleum? Makes filled things so easy to wipe up. Protects it against dust and snow and muddy footprints. That shines as it dries to a lovely, sparkling, protective gloss. That requires no rubbing, no buffing, and has an added glow these days. It means so much to winter housekeeping. You mean? Why, certainly. I'd say Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, naturally. If I gave any other answer, it would be sheer dishonesty. I wouldn't sleep a wink. I'd be deceitful. I'd feel like a dog. See what he means, McGee? Yeah, yeah, I guess I do. Well, I'm convinced. Waxy, you've made me see the light. Good. <laughs> Thank goodness, at last. Yep. From now on, anytime anybody asks me what's good for linoleum, I'll tell them glow coat. <laughs> But to get back to this $5,000 I found, Junior, do you think I ought to keep it or spend it? Take it back, pal. Take it back and be a hero. Whoever lost that dough will turn this town upside down looking for it, so you might as well kiss it goodbye anyhow. Kiss it what? Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Wilcox. Goodbye. <laughs> A lot of help he was. Look, dearie, why don't we just take this money to the police station? They'll find the owner and all our worries. Will... Come in. Oh, it's Mayor Latrivia, McGee. Come in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi, Latrivia. <laughs> what are you looking so grumpy about? Well, he just found $5,000 in cash, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Oh, my heart bleeds for you, McGee. <laughs> what would you do if you found 50000 Beat your head against the wall? I ain't sore because I found it. I'm sore because nobody wants me to keep it. What's the use of good, clean living? Outdoor exercise. Eating a lot of fresh eggs and vegetables if a guy can't keep what he finds on a streetcar. As the man in the phone booth said as he flew over Kansas in a tornado, I don't believe I quite get the connection. <laughs> McGee, I'm a member of the legal profession. Now, give me the details of this case, and I'll try to advise you according to law. Great, Mr. Ed. Raise your right hand. Well? Do you swear to believe everything I say, no matter how ridiculous? McGee! <laughs> You're the witness, he's the lawyer. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, swear me in, Counselor. Well, it won't be necessary for a preliminary hearing. Now then, how did this happen? Well, you see, Mr. Mayor, he had his shoes repaired and was bringing them home on the streetcar, and he evidently got the boxes mixed up. I object. That's hearsay evidence besides being immaterial and rear elephant. <laughs> Watch yourselves, kids. I read Earl Stanley Gardner, too, you know. Well, you mean McGee picked up the wrong shoebox when he got off the streetcar, got home, and found $5,000 in it? Yeah, now if I try to return it, what's to prevent the legal owner from brushing me off with a $3 reward or something? Nothing. In fact, that's probably what will happen. Then you can say, where are my shoes? And he'll say, I threw them away. And you'll say, I had $10,000 sewed up in the lining of those shoes, and I'm going to sue you, but I'll settle for $2,500. Heavenly days, I... Trivia, you're retained. Why, that's the fine... But he'll say, if you sue me, I'll charge you with malicious prosecution and sue you for $100,000. We're losing money fast. <laughs> yeah, my gosh, I haven't had a chance. Then you merely answer, I'll counter-sue you for half a million for defamation of character. Huh? He says, I'll sue you for a million, you chiseler. Ooh. You say, chiseler, eh? That'll cost you two million dollars for slander. <laughs> wow, two million bucks. Can I collect it, Latrim? No. <laughs> no, because he'll check up on your bank account, look into your financial background, and have you jailed as a vagrant. <laughs> oh, dear. So, my advice to you is take the three dollar reward, if any. Come on, I'll drive you down to the police station to turn it in. Oh. The King's Men sing Galway Bay. If you ever go across the sea to Ireland, then maybe at the closing of your day, Children at their play, and to sit beside. 
I still say this is the wrong way to handle this money. The police station is right in front of us, dear. Oh, I see it. Nice of Mary Latrivia to drive us this far. Oh, but look, kiddo, just let me go back to Kramer's drugstore and break one of these tens, will you? I'll get a cigar out of it No, at least. no. Don't touch mm. a penny of it, McGee. Now, come on, open the door and don't drop the money. Don't worry. If everybody... Hey, look on that bench over there. Isn't that Wallace Wimple? Well, it certainly is. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Imagine meeting you here. Yeah. Hi, Wimp. Trouble, boy? Hello, folks. <laughs> no, nothing special, Mr. McGee. I just wanted some license information. Dog license or hunting license? No, my cousin kept his restaurant open too late, and these policemen revoked his beer license. Oh. And my uncle ran into a lamppost, and they revoked his driver's license. So? Well, <laughs> I was wondering if they could do something about my marriage license. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said no, but... What brings you down here, Mr. McGee? A policeman? No. I and Molly just came down to turn in a shoebox I found with five G's in it, Wimp. F -f five G's? Yep. I found two G's in front of the Bijou Theater one day. Yeah? They fell off the electric sign during a high wind. And... <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean money? Open the box, dearie. Okay. There. Cast your glimmers on that pretty pile of pesos, boy. Ooh, look at the loot. You picked up the wrong package on the street car this morning, Mr. Wimple, and this is it. My goodness. I picked up the wrong package on a bus one time, and when I got it home and opened it, do you know what it was? What, Wimp? Somebody's garbage. <laughs> I ran an ad in the paper, but nobody ever... Ooh, cover up that money quick. The sergeant's looking at you. Where? Right here, mister. Oh. Bring it up here and let's have a look at it. That's a lot of money you got there. Five thousand bucks. I had my shoes in a box on a streetcar, Sergeant, see? And some guy picked up the wrong box and left me this one. My wife says I ought to turn it in. Hmm. Now, your name and address, please. Me? I'm Fibber McGee of 79 Whistle Vista, and this is my wife, Molly. How do you do, I'm sure? Fibber McGee. Check that, Brannigan. I'm Wallace Wimple, a friend. Uh, I can vouch for Mr. McGee. He's all right. Unless you've got something on him. <laughs> Your, uh, occupation, Mr. McGee? A good question. Well, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I, uh, well, I do a lot of things. But that is, uh... Check that, Brannigan. Mm. For goodness sake, Mayor Latrivia himself drove us down here. We're very good friends of his. Check that, too, Brannigan. <laughs> he will. Now, about this dough, Sarge. There's 5,000 bucks there and 10s and 20s. You can give me a receipt for it, and if your boys can't find the guy that lost it, I'll pick it up in the morning, see? He's got a trip he'd like to take to Honolulu, Sergeant. Yeah. And if you can't find the owner, I'll go with him. <laughs> sure, and if somebody does claim it, call me and we'll tear down his story so fast. Yeah. Uh, how's that, Brannigan? Yeah. Okay. All right, you folks can go now. We just contacted the mayor and he vouches for well, it. Well, he'd better. The things we know about him. <laughs> Thanks for bringing this in, and I know the Secret Service boys will be glad to see it. So I want to ask you a few questions tomorrow about where you found it, of course. Secret Service. What have they got to do with it? This is counterfeit dough, lady. Huh? And if you'd tried to spend any of it, you'd really have been in trouble. Oh. There's a cop behind every cash register in town waiting for it. I know a store that doesn't use a cash register. They have a paper bag under the counter. Why? Right? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, go fry a pig. <laughs> what was that? Now, take it easy, Mr. Whipple. Well, much obliged, Sarge. Tell the Secret Service boys I'm always glad to cooperate. You know, I had a feeling that dough was no good. <laughs> That's why I insisted on running right to the police with it. <laughs> eh, Mrs. McGee? Yes. We wanted to go to Honolulu the hard way, officer. <laughs> ah, well, we'll stop at the radio station on the way home and see if we can't get on a quiz program. Yeah. Come on, dear. Okay. <laughs> You know, there's no doubt about it. The self-polishing floor wax that you want is the one that will give your kitchen linoleum a higher luster, make it shine far more brightly. Well, there is a wax that will do it. It's Glow Coat, the self-polishing floor wax made exclusively by S.C. Johnson & Son. Glow Coat has a new glow that makes your linoleum glisten with a more beautiful finish. So be sure to look for the familiar yellow container with the bright red band. In that container is genuine Johnson's Glow Coat, the new glowing glow coat for a brighter, more attractive kitchen linoleum. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Oh, McGee, what are you counting now? Sheep. <laughs> With green backs. Jumping out of a shoebox. Put the lid on and go to sleep here. Okay. Good night. Sixty. Good night, all. If you want lustrous, beautiful furniture, dusting won't do. To clean your furniture to perfection, polish it to beauty, you need Johnson's Cream Wax. It cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that using it is practically as easy as dusting. Why, with Johnson's Cream Wax, it's possible to completely clean and polish a coffee table in just 40 seconds. Because Johnson's Cream Wax not only cleans in a moment, it dries and polishes in a moment. And it dries hard, leaves no sticky oil to catch more dust as soon as you finish. Ask for Johnson's Cream Wax today, the fastest furniture wax polish you can buy. You'll get clean furniture, furniture polished to a high luster practically as easily as you now do your dusting. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. WMAQ and WMAQ-FM, NBC in Chicago.